All right, so to get more understanding of what, of what is going on, let's go to a jury. Thank you, Chamberlain, and welcome back to Abuja. Standing by with me is Honorable Razak Atunwa, the chairman of the House Committee on Justice, and Barrister Aliu Abdullahi, a policy analyst and lawyer. Let me start with you, Honorable. We've heard uh, some of the uh, kind of conditions that have now been given uh, as part of the fallout of the ex joint executive session between the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, you're in a pretty uh, suitable position as the chairman of the Justice Committee in the House to tell us what exactly is the National Assembly having in mind when it says that it will invoke its quote-unquote powers. And let me say, not only as a chairman of the House Committee on Justice, but I was also uh, part of the meeting, the joint session, which we held yesterday. Uh, we had a robust debate and discussion uh, about a wide variety of issues and we came out with an array of resolutions that you saw. Now, we decided that those resolutions were important for the country, uh, and therefore uh, we held that joint, resolution, uh, joint uh, uh, session. Now, we dealt with issues ranging from security, the state of insecurity in the country, spate of killings should be curtailed, and therefore the security agencies should be given marching orders. Uh, we dealt with the economy. We said there ought to be a containment of the uh, growing trend of unemployment in the country, taking advantage of the uh, rising crude oil prices. Uh, and uh, we dealt with matters of governance, matters of deepening our democracy. So we came up with about 12-point resolution. So uh, those, for me, are very important matters for us to have dealt with at that joint session. And we came up across, uh, about those resolutions in the interest of the country, purely in the interest of the country. Now, let me be very clear. You've laid out some of those uh, kind of component parts of the statement. But I want to ask you very specifically, uh, about my original question, which mm. was about the powers that were threatened, uh, if, if I can use the word threatened, mm. uh, to be invoked if uh, the president does not ad adhere to uh, that position. Uh, what are those powers? It's somewhat inaccurate and, and disingenuous to say we threatened uh, the president or, or threatened anyone indeed. What we said was that having said, made those resolutions, it's important that the president takes heed of them and acts upon them. If there is a failure to act upon them, we will do what we are constitutionally empowered to do to ensure that the, our democracy is deepened, that their, uh, the, their security of life and property a, a, in this country, and that we ensure that we protect our citizenry from fear, intimidation, and we ensure that we protect our people from uh, loss of lives. Let me be very clear here. If, if you say the president has failed in these areas or is failing in these areas mm. and they need to be addressed, yeah. Are you not suggesting, perhaps, that if he fails to r correct these things, that the solution in the invocation of these powers may be alluding to impeachment as widely speculated? Not at all. No, in the resolution, nothing uh, of impeachment was mentioned. Not at all. We have a wide range of powers uh, constitutionally. We can make laws. That's our primary duties. We can make laws to redress some of these issues. We can conduct oversight uh, on some of these issues to ensure that the agencies responsible uh, carry out their constitutional roles. So uh, to harp on or leap to impeachment seems to me to be taking it a bit too far. None of us mentioned impeachment during our, 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 our debate and discussion in the executive session. So uh, I don't see why the newspapers uh, and did anyone will say we threatened impeachment not far from it but barrister abdullahi what, what is your assessment of uh, of the honorable's uh, statement well um this is what i think uh, about the entire resolution that they came up with yesterday um although he mentioned all the other things that were contained in the resolution that are meant to be for the public interest one will still wonder at the end of the day, why are they coming at this time now? Just barely a day after one of the principal officers were invited, was invited by the police. And uh, inside that resolution, if you, remember, if you could recall, there was an item there about the need to secure the independency of the legislative houses, 
and also to desist, desist from intimidating the members of or opponents or people who hold different opinions. So now that, with all this he read out, one will likely jump to the conclusion that the entire resolution is about just that fact. But the other things about the security, about the economy, are just mere cosmetics to hide the fact that the resolution was actually about what happened to, the, to its principal uh, uh, officer. And this is not the first time Nigerians are seeing things like this coming from the National Assembly, particularly the Senate. If you recall, I think one of the bone of contention when Senator Dino Malay was actually arrested and they invited the IG of the police. We saw later a document emanating from that house which shows he was to come and actually explain about the reasons for that arrest. But later when they realized that error and they quickly changed the matter that the IG of police should come and tell the house, explain about the ongoing security situation in the country. Now we see a pattern where our legislative houses are turned to serve a collective few that are, that are supposed to actually lead those two houses, not to do as we elected them to do. That's to serve the interest of the people. And here, that's my own opinion, and that's the opinion of majority of the people out there. But Barrister Abdullahi, you, just you're, you're, as you will do. 